Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and I finally got here. Finally got to the point where I can record this video. It's taken me longer than I thought it would to get uh, all the graphics together and everything I need. So this is the 5% video. The idea is you follow my instructions and at the end of the season, globally, you'll be in the top 5%. I can't promise that, but that's the realistic aim. If you've not been part of this yet now's the best time to jump in because we're going to use our wild card hopefully you still have your second wild card if not then maybe just watch it and enjoy it and maybe try and gradually transition to what we're showing here so i always start by showing how the previous week did and what scores you would have got and then we look at what transfers we need to do but because it's a we're using the wild card we're going to be changing lots of players so let's get into this and see how it goes so starting with the bankers, these are players that everyone that I'm aware of who's following this strictly, they all have these players. That's Ward, Bueno, Andreas, Rashford, Martinelli, Salah and Haaland. Ward was on the bench, Bueno benched, Andreas benched. Rashford got two, Martinelli two, Salah 21 and Haaland four. So that was an average, you actually got 29 points for the bankers, the players that you all would have had. Nobody following this system would have been without Salah because we all brought him in a couple of weeks ago and we didn't move him on. If you watch other content creators, the vast majority of those two weeks ago went crazy buying in lots of Everton and Wolves assets. We didn't do that. And because that messed their team up, last game week, most of them wildcarded because their teams were a mess and we didn't do that because we're saving it for this week. So we're fortunate in that we've done better than them, of course, the chances are they would have done all right this last week with Arsenal. Arsenal should have done much better than they did against Bournemouth, or at least they're expected to. Anyway, 29 points here. Goalkeeper, you'd have had one of Pope, Ramsdale or Kepa. They scored 1-1-6, one, one, which is an average of 2.7. You'd have had three or four of these defenders, depending on your formation. Ake, Gabriel, Trent, Trippier, Shaw... Me, White, Castagne, Tarkovsky. They scored 5, 1, 6, 1, minus 1, 1, 7, 2, 0. So the average from these three or four defenders would have been 8.5 points. Not very good, but that's okay. Most people did not very good this week. You'd have had one or two of these midfielders. Saka, Odegaard, Mitoma, Mares. But Mahrez didn't play, so the one coming off your bench would almost certainly have been Andreas. These scored 2, 2, 13 and 8. So that's an average of 9.4. For the forwards, you'd have had one or two of Kane, Darwin, Enketia, Mitrovic, Tony, Nonto. These scored 2, 12, didn't play, 1, 8, 1. So that would have been an average of 7.2 by my reckoning. Now, you would have also had a captain. I left it up to you which captain you chose, and it was between Haaland and Saka. So one of these would have worn the old mule hat. They both did terribly. So if it was Haaland, you'd have got four more points. If it was Saka, you'd have got two more points. That's obviously an average of three. Globally, it was an awful week. People only scored 42. And the way I reckon things is you want each player to get five points, your captain 10 points. So 60 points is the target. If you were doing this system, the worst you could possibly have done was to get 41 points. The average was 59.8 and the maximum was 100. Now last week I showed a couple of teams. I just want to show them again, especially for anyone who's just joining. So this is Celebrating Victory. They've been following this system since game week one and they scored 62 this week. And you see the global average was 42. Average for this system, 59.8. They scored 62. This is Sarah Jane B. So game week 16, that was the last game before the World Cup. So at that time, they were at 633,000. Bumpy rode up and down, and they're now at 194,000, which is well inside the top 2%. And we're only going for the top 5%. Texas T-Rexes, which is Iota Wolf, they didn't do the system until after the World Cup. So before they joined, they're at just over the 3 million mark. 
and then they've been following this system and they're now uh, within the top 7% they're at 728,000 but considering they were about 27% when they started following this what 10 weeks ago or so I think that's pretty good. So the point of me showing this is it doesn't if you're a long way down the league whether you're at 2 million, 5 million, 6 million or any any million <laughs> you can start doing this if you've got your wild card and hopefully you'll climb up the ranking and you'll be all right. If you're if you're currently doing very well maybe inside the top 100,000 then watch the entertainment but I would advise do your own thing because clearly you know what you're doing and just stay with whatever your current plan is. So 555 subscribers, thank you very much. If you know somebody who's doing a lot worse than you in your league, or maybe a friend or a colleague at work who's in a different league to you, could you please pass this video link on to them so that they can start doing this and they can start doing better. The more people that know this, the better. But I also understand you don't want other people in your league doing this because they might beat you or do too well. Uh, so doing this doesn't guarantee you're going to win your league, but hopefully you'll end up pretty high in your league and you might win your little mini league. Last game week, I showed this chart, which was by Ben Krellin. And you'll see on game week 32, there were only six teams that were guaranteed to be playing. Game week 28, looks like there were eight teams. And that's by Ben Krellin. That's his Twitter handle. He's worth following because he predicts when there are going to be games, double game weeks, blank game weeks. After the FA, last FA Cup result, this is how it now looks. And there are a lot more teams playing in game 28 than anticipated. And there's probably only going to be four teams blanking in game week 32. And it's likely to be Brighton, Chelsea, Man City and Man United. So that's what my assumption is going forward. Now the next few things I'm going to show you is just showing my workings. So you can have some confidence. It's not completely random the players that I'm picking. So I took Ben's sheet and I made, I copied it but for myself. So I put all the games in from 27 to 34 and I've blanked out where people aren't playing. This is assuming the FA Cup results go as the way we'd expect with the favourites winning. I then coloured these with four different colours, red, yellow, orange and green, according to how I intuitively felt uh, whether it's a good fixture or a bad fixture. Uh, this isn't based on stats, this is based on intuition but of course that's massively affected by stats and past performance. I then went through and considered the double game weeks and made that a single colour. So for example uh, Bournemouth their double game week in 29 is home to Fulham and home to Brighton. I reckon both those fixtures were yellow but a game week as a whole because it's a double became green so there are some colour changes there. And then based on what their fixture colours are, I then coloured all the teams themselves. And then I took out, what was that, seven teams I took out because I felt it's not worth investing in them because over the next few weeks, the fixtures just aren't good enough. So the teams I've eliminated from this system are Aston Villa, Bournemouth, Everton, Fulham, Man City, Southampton and Wolves. So I'm not giving any players from those teams except Haaland because if you already have Haaland he's potentially worth keeping and I'll get to that in a minute and the other exception is Watkins from Villa but he's the only Villa playing player that I've got in this system. So regarding Haaland if you go to your transfer page and then click on the list section it will show all your players in a list form so here's a subset of mine and you'll see there's a column that's called CP that stands for current price that's what you'd have to pay for the player now there's an SP that's the selling price so if you sold them what would you get now and there's PP which is purchase price that's how much you paid so for me for Haaland I bought him at 11.5 I can sell him for 11.8 but if I then want to buy him back at the current price it's 12.2 so I would lose 0.6 million if I sold Haaland and maybe bought him back next week or the week after. So for me, I'm almost certainly going to keep hold of Haaland. It's the same with Rashford. I will lose a fair bit of money if I sell Rashford and buy him back. But somebody like Johnson, who I only bought last week, I bought for 5.7. I can sell for 5.7. He's going to cost me 5.7 again. 
he's fine to sell. Now, this is just a guide for you. If you want to sell Harland, you want to sell Rashford, that's absolutely fine. You can do it. But just be aware you could be losing money doing this. That's what that was about. Anyway, back to this. So I eliminated seven of the teams. So this is what the grid looks like without those seven. I then colour coded them across from Double Game Week 27 to look at what their run is like. So Brighton and Hove Albion have got an easy double in 27. They don't play 28. Easy double 29. But then they're away to Tottenham, which they could lose to nil. Away to Chelsea, which they could lose to nil. They're blanking in Game Week 32. And then the fixtures are okay again. So although I think it's, if you've still got your free hit, it's definitely worth loading up on Brighton. But we're probably going to have to dump some of those players soon. And it's also worth keeping in mind Brighton, Chelsea and Man United almost certainly blanking in Game Week 32. So we mustn't take too many players from those three combined. And at the bottom you'll see those three teams, Forest, Tottenham and West Ham. Although we might want to take some of their players, by the time we get to about Game Week 31, 32, it's time to be offloading those and getting others. Whereas Arsenal and Brentford and Newcastle, you could hold all the way through if you wanted to. But don't worry about that. If you followed none of that, don't worry about it because each week I'll be guiding you with what your moves are. Well, this is all just to show you there is thought behind what I'm showing you. It's not just random. And that's the team's ordered. So our plan, assuming you've still got all the chips, apart from triple captain, that doesn't matter. Game week 27, which is the game week we're in now, we're going to use our wild card. So when you do your transfers, make sure you choose wild card. Game week 28, Man United, Brighton, Liverpool and West Ham are not playing. But we're going to free hit, which means we don't care. As long as you've got your free hit, we don't care which teams aren't playing then because we're going to choose a different team next week. If you no longer have your free hit chip, then you need to be wary of the players you buy. You don't want to buy too many that are blanking in game week 28. But I'll show you how to watch out for those in a minute. Game week 29, we're intending to, it's a double game week, we're intending to bench boost. However, if there are suspensions or injuries between now and then, we may backtrack on that and decide not to bench boost. But the current plan is we're going to bench boost then. Blank game week 32, we're just going to navigate. When we get there, we make adjustments and transfers in a couple of weeks before that to hopefully get us round so we can get out 9 or 10, maybe even 11 playing players that week. But there'll be lots of teams globally that don't get 11 players out. So we don't need to worry too much about that. And a couple of last tips here for when you're choosing your players. Apart from when you bench boost, there's always going to be four players on your bench. One keeper and three outfield players. So when you go to the next section and you're choosing your players, you potentially want to be choosing two or three very cheap players and maybe a cheapish keeper because they're going to be living on your bench. However, they will be playing when we bench boost in Game Week 29. The other thing is, of course, you can only choose three players from any one team. And one last thing, sorry. Because Brighton and Brentford have got a double Game Week in 27, if you've got a free hit, I strongly recommend you get three from each of those. If you don't have your free hit, still get three Brentford players. But if you only want to get one, two or three Brighton players, that's okay. If it was me, I'd probably get at least two Brighton players. Something else to help because of this whole chip strategy. I've got a grid next to each player. If you don't understand this, that's fine. But I'll just explain what is there for those who do want to know. We've written on here double game week 27, blank game week 28, double game week 29 and blank game week 32. And they're colour coded. So if, when they're grey, that means they have a single game week. So for example... I think Tottenham and Arsenal, they've just got one game in each of those weeks. If it's green on 27 and 29, that means they've got two games in those weeks. So that's, for example, what Brentford's got. So in these four weeks, Brentford have six games, where Tottenham and Arsenal have only got four. Brighton, they've got two games in 27, two in 29, but they blank in 28 and they blank in 32, hence they're red. Uh, this is what Man City look like. They've got one game in 27, one in 29, but they're not playing 28 or 32. So if you compare Brentford with Man City, Brentford in these four weeks have got six games. Man City have got two. So globally, there are a lot of people selling Haaland to get in Tony because Tony should get more points over these weeks, as an example. 
And then let me think, that's a, a lot of teams have a single in 27, but double in 29. There's, I think that's Liverpool that are blanking in 28, doubling in 29. And then that would be, I can't remember which team that is now. <laughs> but we'll come across them. One of the teams has got a single 27, 28, doubling in 29, and then blanking in 32. And then I think that's Man United. They blank in 28 and 32. And they've got a double in 29. And I've just remembered that team's Chelsea there. So if you have your free hit still, you can ignore the reds in 28 just by the other players. If you don't have your free hit, try to not buy more than maybe four or five that are red in 28. And as for the 32s that are red, keep it in the back of our mind, but don't know that that worries us too much so far. Too much at the moment. So goalkeepers, I'm going to show you six goalkeepers. You need to choose two of these. Man United, De Gea, and you see the little box there. That's just to remind you, he's got a single in 27, blanking 28, 32, and a double in 29. Raya from Brentford, Ramsdale from Arsenal, Newcastle Pope, Chelsea Kepper, and then Leicester Ward. Now, Brentford's a very popular keeper people are buying this week because he's got a double in 27 and a double in 29. So he's the keeper that's most likely to score the most points in those two game weeks for sure. Ward I've kept in here because he's the cheapest keeper that's playing. I know we've got the Southampton keeper. But I think he's a keeper that's worth having and putting on the bench. So if it was me doing this, I would choose Ward and one of the other five. However, if you'd rather go, for example, Kepa and Rea, that's okay too. Or you can pick any two. But it's worth keeping in mind, because we intend to bench boost in 29, you may want to avoid Ramsdale because he won't get two games and the other five will. Also keep in mind, if we look at uh, Man United, for example, De Gea, if you choose De Gea to be in goal, you can only choose two other Man United players in total. Whereas if you think you're going to want more than that in the outfield, then you'd go for someone else. I hope that made sense. So anyway, pick two of these keepers. Now we get five defenders and I've split them into two screens. You want to choose two from the first screen and three from the second, or else three from the first and two from the second. And from now on in, they're all ordered by price. So you've got Trent from Liverpool, Alexander-Arnold, Van Dijk from Liverpool, Trippier, Newcastle, Chilwell, Chelsea, James, Chelsea, Shaw from Man United, Gabriel from Arsenal and Zinchenko from Arsenal. These are all very good players and over the next few weeks could do quite well. James does get injured very easily but when he's not injured he's incredibly good. Me from Brentford, Estupinian from Brighton, Aguard from West Ham, Botman Newcastle, Pinnock from Brentford, Castagne from Leicester, Fofana from Chelsea and Worrell from Nottingham Forest. So for example from this page you could if you wanted to choose me, Estupinian and Pinnock. They're all quite cheap and they're both playing twice this coming game week so that's very good. But if you did that you could only then choose one other Brentford player because you've got two already on this player. Right midfielders it's the same deal as defenders. I've split them into two pages. Pick two from page one and three from page two or else three from page one and two from page two. And if you know nothing about football and you just pick random players, you should still do okay. But if you do know a little bit about football or you recognise some of the names, go for those, why not? It's fine. Salah from Liverpool. Fernandez, Man United. Saka from Arsenal. Madison from Leicester. Gakpo from Liverpool. Rashford from Man United. And Odegaard from Arsenal. And then two or three of these to make up the balance of five. Martinelli from Arsenal, Gibbs White from Forest, McAllister from Brighton, Mitoma from Brighton, March from Brighton, Jensen from Brentford and Somerville from Leeds. I strongly recommend you get at least one of those Brighton midfielders. If you want to get two, that's fine, that's even better. We've not got the Brighton keeper because I'm not confident we know for sure which keeper it is, whether it's Sanchez or Steele. And we've I've not put in a Brighton attacker. So there's only four Brighton players in this system. That's the three on the screen now. 
and it's I can't even say his name now. It's Stupinian from uh, who was the defender. Whereas for Brentford, we've got I think there might be two or three defenders, and there's another three players anyway. So that's going to be a bit more difficult to choose. And look at that, Yelena just sent me a heart. It's not really to me. I'm just saying that because it popped up. Right, one or two of these forwards. Haaland, if I didn't have Haaland now, or I could sell him without losing too much money, I probably wouldn't get him. But if I had money tied up with him, I'd almost certainly keep him. Kane for Tottenham. Darwin from Liverpool. Tony from Brentford. He's the most popular player probably being bored at the moment because of the double game weeks. Yao Felix from Chelsea. I've personally had Felix for the last three weeks. He's blanked all three weeks. But when you watch him, he's clearly very, very good. So I'm heavily tempted to keep him. But don't let that influence you. And then pick one or two of these. You can have a total of three strikers. So Watkins from Villa. Isaac from Newcastle. Ings from West Ham. Mbuemo from Brentford. And Johnson from Forest. Mbuemo is not equivalent to Tony. Tony's expected to score a lot more than Mbuemo. But if it helps you getting the rest of your team right, it's okay to have Mbuemo as a cheap striker to make everything work. Regarding the bench and the bench goalkeeper, each week with this system, all we need to do is choose the four players that go on the bench and the other 11 sort themselves out. So the bench goalkeeper, we had six goalkeepers we chose from. If you've got Raya, you're definitely going to play him. So put your other keeper on the bench. However, if you haven't got Raya, simply put your cheapest keeper on the bench, which means if you've got Ward, he's on your bench. If you don't have Ward, but you have Kepper from Chelsea, you put him on your bench. If you have neither of those, but you have Ramsdale, he's on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have... I'd put Pope on the bench next, actually, rather than De Gea. But come on, <laughs> I doubt any of you really chose uh, De Gea and Pope. They're the two most expensive keepers. So if you chose De Gea and Pope, which is fine, I would play De Gea over Pope this week. Now regarding your other three bench players, I'm now going to show you some players. The first one that comes up that you have goes in position three on your bench, the second position two, and the next one position one. And if at the end your bench isn't full, we'll get to that at the end. But some formations are illegal, so you can't, for example, put all three strikers on the bench. You have to play at least one. You can't put three defenders on the bench. So your bench order is, if you've got Worrell, put him on your bench. Then it's Fofana. Then it's Castagna from Leicester. Then Somerville, Gibbs-White, Johnson, Aguered, Ings, and finally Isaac. Now if you still haven't got your bench full, I would say put your cheapest player on the bench, but not one that's got a double game week. Now, this does mean you're going to potentially have some good players on your bench. For example, you may have Martinelli on your bench, but the chances are the players you've got playing are going to do better than Martinelli. And that's just the way it is this week. A lot of teams globally are going to have points on their bench. Some managers will be bench boosting this week, but we're not going to do that. Now, how do you know if a player's bench uh, got a double game week or not? I've been asked that before. Here's a screenshot. Trippier's says Wolverhampton, me says Everton and Southampton. Because they've got two games listed under their name, that means that it's a double game week for them. So game week 27 captains. The safest captain, if you've chosen Tony, is to choose Tony as your captain. So he gets to wear the old mule hat. However, another perfectly good captain would in fact be any of the Brighton midfielders. So if you've got a Brighton midfielder and don't have Tony, choose a Brighton midfielder. If you've got more than one, choose it randomly. It really doesn't matter. There are different predictions. Who's going to do best? We don't know. If you've got Brighton midfielders and Tony, but would rather go for a Brighton midfielder, that's fine. Tony's the safer option because he's going to be captain the most, but go for whichever one of these you want. There's a remote chance you haven't got any of these, in which case you'll go for the vice captain as your vice as your main captain. If you have to if you have more than one of the players on the screen, make one your captain and one your vice captain. That's what I'd suggest. But if, if you only got one of these, then for your vice captains, I would suggest Kane is the best vice captain. After him, choose Salah. If you have neither of those, then any other double game week player is fine. 
choose them as your captain. Now, I know that was a much longer video than normal. I'm sorry about that. But it's a very important week and this is the last week where we get to properly set up the team and this is going to take us through to the end of the season and with the wild card this week free hit next week bench boost game week 29 we'll hopefully get a green arrow all three weeks thank you very much for watching i'll try to read your comments and answer any questions there if you do do this system then if you feel okay to make it public please Put your game number your, it's in your url the id of your team and then i can track you and see how things are going once again thank you very much for watching bye